Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am still T Maso at thewatchbox.com. It is still in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am T Maso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a 2016 model year limited edition of 100 pieces in platinum from Alango und Zona of Glasuta, Germany. This is the Richard Langa Jumping Seconds, and it is a deceptively complex watch. 39.9 millimeters in diameter. I measured at 10.9 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 47.7 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it's a good fit. It'll fit easily under a sleeve, being thin and also having a domed bezel. And you can see down the barrel, the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist, even over the top, which exaggerates the width of the watch. You can see it's not out over the edge of my wrist. The cuff shot one more time, and I'm pulling it fairly tight. You may not wear the watch this tight. And then you can see down the barrel one more time. So I recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. The strap is large rectangular scale alligator leather with symmetrical scale profiles, indicating a very high-end cut of the beast. You can see that there is some bolstering to give it some thick a folded edge, a monotone stitch, no crimping, no gouging, a brand new Longa factory strap. You can see calfskin on the bottom. And then we have a matching pin buckle made by Brogioli. There's their B right there. This buckle is a smart piece. You can see externally Longa branded with some soft facets externally. We have an elevated bridge. So you can see this, the bridge is elevated rather than sitting level with the prongs. So the strap sits inside the buckle when it's on the wrist rather than stacking up. We also have this little retaining bar, clever feature on Longa pin buckles. So if you're like me and you have a small wrist and you're gonna use the smallest hole or maybe even punch a smaller one, you know that it's easy to get pinned on the pin. Sometimes it's hard to extricate, so this prevents the strap from sinking down to the base of the pin, where it can be hard to remove if you have that smaller wrist and a tighter strap on that wrist. The case is different from some Longas because it features satination in its mid-profile. Some Longa watches are all polished. Some have the satin-finished mid-case, and I really like that for its contrast. So we do have that here. Characteristically, we have Longa stepped lugs that have been a feature since the original modern collection of Longa Unzona watches in 1994. We have a relatively short vertical facet to the bezel, which then has a terminal domed curvature up to the sapphire. We have the crown here. Alango Unzuna branded, and then the dial with a Johann Seyfert triple overlap scale, and that is Johann Seyfert from the 19th century. This is not a Venn diagram. A lot of people want to call it a Venn diagram, but Seyfert actually used this overlapping scale. However, this is a Richard Langa model line piece, and you know that because when you see Roman numerals at Langa, it's Richard Langa. When you have, for example, Arabic numerals, it's the 1815. Taking a quick look, we have a regulator style dial. So we have separate hours, minutes, and seconds. We have deadbeat seconds, and it really is spot on. It's incredibly well aligned. We also have, ba -ba -ba, one of the complications on this watch, a zero reset hacking second system. So it resets precisely to the index of a 12, which makes it easy to set this precisely to a reference time. We also have a little power reserve indicator down at the base of the dial, and that will turn red when you have approximately 10 hours of power reserve left in the movement. It is a manual wind, it has a 42 hour power reserve, and as you wind it, that little red power reserve warning will go away. My winding is slow going, so we may as well move over to the opposite side. And this is where a lot of the action happens. You can see number 42 of 100. I mentioned Brogioli making the buckle. Looks like FTOR made the case. That is a Swiss-based Richemont-owned company that makes cases, which explains why there is a Swiss hallmark on this German-made watch. Platinum, very dense. The movement, actually quite large. Considering the, the movement is 33.6, the watch is only 39.9, so it's a real hand-in-glove fit. So a wonderful proportion of movement size to case size. We have a traditional three-quarter style plate. The golden-hued material used for bridges and plates is German silver, nickel, copper, zinc, with the copper giving it that golden hue. The three-quarter plate, 
the pivot jewel set in golden screw fixed chaton cups, the German silver material, the freehand engraving of the balance cock, all of this connecting the modern Longa company, which was created in 1990, to the 19th century era of Longa watchmaking, founded by F.A. Longa, and then perpetuated by his sons and grandchildren. And this watch here, created by the reborn Alangu Unzona. The original Alangu Unzona was collectivized under the East German communists in the early 50s, and that became the GUB. The GUB, after the fall of communism, became the modern Glasuta Original. So we actually have two different threads of Alangu Unzona watchmaking extant in the town of Glasuta today. This, though, has set the pace. As long as house style has really defined what we've come to expect in the look of a modern luxury German wristwatch. Let's talk tech specs. So you can see we have this remontoire system that's different from the one we have in the Zeitwerk, which uses a hairspring between two third wheels that gets energized once a minute and then drives the escapement for 60 seconds. This, while still dependent on a spring, is more like the system used by F.P. Journe, whose remontoire has one second bursts of energy and has enough energy to drive the escapement for one second. The advantage of this is that there's less fluctuation in balance amplitude in between the topping off of the remontoire. So on the Zeitwerk, it can fall by a dozen, two dozen degrees quite easily over the minute's worth of energy here because it's getting re-energized every second. The amplitude doesn't have the same ebb and flow. It's more consistent. We have a large free sprung balance, although there is a swan's neck regulator for fine adjustments. Almost all the adjustment here will be done by hairspring manipulation and by turning the variable inertia masses on the inner face of the balance rim. This beats away at three hertz, so six beats per second, and then you have the one hertz deadbeat system. All of this pivots on 50 joules, and it is adjusted in a high horology and chronometer style, five positions. You'll also note a feature that is not universal on longer watches. There is an overcoil hairspring here, which enables it to breathe concentrically or keep consistent time in any physical position. You can also see the underlying mechanism, including the springs and the levers of the zero reset hacking system. They're visible for your viewing pleasure. And then there is a large hacking lever adjacent to the balance, which you can see stopping the balance. Take a quick look. We have black polish on the case clamp screws, the cap to the escape wheel, the swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. We have fired blue screws used to mostly fix components in place, such as the chaton. The idea behind these little gold cups was back in the pocket watcher. It was often not possible to precisely press jewels into bridges and plates, so a precision gold cup was made. The jewel was pressed into the cup, and then it would be fixed into the bridge of the plate using screws, and so that's why we have them here. They're there for aesthetics today, although it has been said that Chaton cups may add a slight amount of shock resistance. You could see the Glasuta stripes. They're not Cote de Genève because we're not in Switzerland. And then we have beautiful mirrored anglage on the edge of all the bridges. And if you look carefully here, we have two elements that I deeply appreciate. The bridge for the remontoire and the zero reset, it has a sharp inward angle right there where two bevels meet in an inward crease and it has a sharp outward point where they come to a point. And that's really nice to see. A lot of Geneva seal movements don't have even one outward point or inward angle. Then you could see uh, collimation or sort of spiral set nation on the top of the remontoire assembly. All of this beautifully done with a floral or florisant style of freehand engraving on the balance cock. No two of these are exactly alike. If you love this watch, it is 30 meters water resistant, so not an aquatic timepiece, but otherwise I would describe this as an all-arounder that you can wear casually, formal, male or female. It's a very versatile watch and very rare. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. One more fun fact, this dial is a solid disc of sterling silver.